Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one whiskey. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike and the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet... The Challenge of the Yukon. Yippee! Ride em, cowboy! Yes, sirree. Little wonder many a He-Man Hollywood movie star goes for this breakfast. It's swell-tasting Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat with milk and fruit. These king-size, ready-to-serve premium grains of rice or wheat pack a man-size taste wallop. And they're good for you. They're shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender as nuts in November. Tomorrow, sure, enjoy this breakfast treat. Eat Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. In the small, rough settlement of Dundee, about ten miles from Selkirk, Shorty Wilkins was well known to the townsmen. Shorty and his wife Kate, a big, rough, pioneer type of woman, had a small claim a few miles out along the trail to Selkirk. Kate ruled their little cabin and Shorty with an iron hand, much to the amusement of the others in Dundee. One afternoon in the fall, when the wind bore a Christmas that hinted at the hard, cold Yukon winter to come... And when the ground was still bare of snow, but firm and hard because of the low temperatures, Shorty had ridden to town on horseback. He made a few purchases at the trading post and then stopped at the cafe. Uh, uh, give me one more, Joe. One more it is, Shorty. <coughs> there you are. <laughs> If Kate finds out you stopped in here, she'll tie you in a knot. Oh, now, look at here. Can't I enjoy myself for even a little while without you reminding me of that? <laughs> now, how come you married up to a large female like Kate, Shorty? Yeah. Why didn't you pick somebody you could handle? <laughs> well, now, I'll tell you, fellas. Kate's sort of determined, if you know what I mean. And she decided to pick me. And next thing I knew, a preacher was saying words that tied us up tighter than a drumhead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know how it is. I got a little woman for a wife, but she sure can talk loud and big. <laughs> well, I reckon Kate's a mighty fine woman, even if she is a mite rough and ready. <laughs> that Kate sure won't let anyone pick on you, Shorty. <laughs> you seem to get along pretty well anyway. Well, we do get along mighty well together. That is, when we're apart. Oh, no. <laughs> when they're apart. <laughs> Hey, yeah, I never saw him before. No, me neither. Well, howdy, stranger. Step up and join us. Sure, don't care if I do. Refreshments is all on me. Set him up, Barkey. Yes, right. Well, this fella knows the quickest way to make friends around here. Yeah, he sure does. He's all right, huh, man? You bet. he is. Glad to see somebody around Dundee has money to throw around loose. Well, matter of fact, I set out from Selkirk last spring with a partner. We staked a claim on the hills east of here. We hit pay dirt, and he bought out my share. Well, what do you know? So you struck gold, eh? Good for you. Yeah, but I don't hanker to spend the winter back in the hills. I got the gold for my share, come here to Dundee on my way through to Selkirk. There I'm going to sell my outfit and take the last boat for Whitehorse, where I'll hole up for the winter in style. Oh, you sure got the right idea. Huh, fellas? He sure has. I bet you'd like to be in his shoes, Shorty. Having enough cash to get away from under Kate's thumb for a while. Oh, now, now, Joe, is that any way to talk about my loving wife? <laughs> well, anyway, Kate had follow me and dragged me back by the scruff of the neck, dunking me in every snowdrift on the way. <laughs> well, there isn't any snowdrifts to dunk in yet. No, but there will be before very long. And even a blizzard wouldn't keep her from coming to Selkirk after me. 
or even the white horse, I bet. <laughs> now, my name's Walt Stoner. I own the cafe. Uh, maybe you'd like to hit the gambling tables before you leave, mister. They're in the other room. No. I don't go for the gambling. Well, the drinks are ready. Come on, step up, man. Help us out. Well, enjoy yourself, mister. If you change your mind, just come into the other room. Yeah. Walt Stoner went into the next room, and signaling the two men who were playing cards, he walked on into a small office at the back. Soon the other two entered. What's up, Walt? Yeah. Why do you want it? Uh, sit down, you two. I got something interesting to tell you. All right. Let's hear it. There's a prospector wearing a heavy beard out there in the cafe, setting everybody up. He's got a wad of cash from his share of a claim he just sold. Hey, that is interesting. What's on your mind, Walt? Just this. Get a look at him, but don't go in where you'll be seen. He's going to be riding towards Selkirk soon. That trail's kind of lonely a few miles out. Yeah, it sure is. That's right. Almost anything could happen along that trail. Yeah, but don't forget, you two are working for me. It wouldn't be good if you pulled a double cross or held anything I have coming back, understand? Yeah. Good. Now, Fred, you and Dave know what I expect you to do. And I don't want any slip-up either. Eh, don't worry, Walt. You can count on us. Let's go, Fred. We'll get a look at that prospector right now. Then we'll be sure to get the right one. Shorty Wilkins stayed a while after the prospector had left. Then he rode out of Dundee along the trail to his cabin. Shorty had ridden a few miles at a leisurely pace when he heard a couple of distant shots. What? See, them shots come from up there around the hillside, sounded like to me. Get up there, fella. Come on. Looks like somebody lying on the trail. There's his horse standing nearby. Oh, hold there now. Gee. What? Holy mackerel. It's that stranger, the prospector who come to the cafe. Been shot in the back. Let's see. Yeah, he's done for, all right. Oh, here comes two men. Lucky they come along. Say, come here. Hurry up. I I'm sure glad you came along. This feller's been shot. I was coming along the... Tra Say, I've seen you both at the cafe, Reach, haven't Reach, Wilkins, and quick. But now, see here, what's the meaning We caught your red hand at Wilkins. Reach, like he said. Yeah, I, I'm reaching. But now, hold on a minute. You've got things wrong. I didn't kill him. I just happened to be cut along the trail. GPS a gun, I... Dave. Sure. He's got one, all right. I'll take it. Just take a look at that gun while you have it. You can see it hasn't been used. We'll let the constable see about that. Now, Dave, we'll take that poor fellow who got shot and this shrimp Wilkins back to Dundee. The constable can take Wilkins into Selkirk to stand trial for murder. It was early evening when Kate Wilkins entered the small building that served as the constable's office. Well, where's that half pint excuse for a man that I'm hitched up to, constable? One of the men came out from town, said he was in jail here. When I get him back to the now, cabin, now, I'll Kate, break everybody... Just, just take it easy now. Got Shorty locked up in the back room till I can get started for Selkirk with him. Selkirk? But you had him locked up back in that room before. Them bars on the window, he can't get out. Let him sleep it off, and if there's any damages to pay off... I guess whoever come after you didn't say why Shorty's locked up, did he? Nope, but I can guess. Once a year, just before the big freeze-up, Shorty always goes to the cafe and... wait a minute, Kate. Just wait a minute. Kate, to tell you, I'm going to have to take Shorty to sell Kirk. But... You see, he's charged with Murder? Murder? Fiddlestick. That sawed-off runt hasn't got the nerve to even hold his gun, much less... Sorry, to... Kate, but we got two witnesses. Well, they give me Shorty's gun with two bullets missing. The victim had two bullet wounds in his back. Witnesses or not, I say Shorty never shot anybody. Well, of course, it's right for you to stick up for him, seeing as how he's your husband and, and all. And seeing but... as how he is my husband, I know him better than you do. Somebody's lying, and I'm going to find out about it. Well... Maybe. Right now, it looks mighty bad for Shorty, ma'am. Look, Constable, you keep him here overnight. You can do that much for me. But I want to get him into Selkirk. And I'm I riding would... into Selkirk right now to get Sergeant Preston and bring him out here. Please wait till he gets here and has a chance to look things over. How about it? Well, all right. Save me a trip. Sergeant Preston can take Shorty back with him when he goes. Sergeant Preston knows Shorty and me. And he knows Shorty couldn't have done a killing. You tell Shorty I've gone for Preston and I'll see him when I get back. 
If anyone can find out just what's what, it'll be Sergeant Preston and that dog, King. I'll get going to Selkirk right now. Kate Wilkins set out for Selkirk at once. After arriving there, she found Sergeant Preston and explained the situation. The Mountie got his horse, and with the great dog, King, racing ahead, Sergeant Preston and King left on the return trip to Dundee. Dawn came very early in the Yukon, and it was light when they reached the constable's office. Oh, 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 oh. I'm telling you, Sergeant, I'll tear this town apart to find out who did this to my shorty. Leave it to me, Kate. I'll get the packs first, and King and I'll do what we can, eh, fella? <laughs> on in, King. Morning, Constable. Ah, hello, Sergeant Preston. Glad to see you and King again. Uh, I guess you and Kate want to talk to Shorty, huh? That's right, Constable. Go ahead, Kate. Oh, now, now, Kate, I can explain everything. You just shut up and relax, Shorty. I brought Sergeant Preston and King to help get you out of this mess. Sure, glad to see him. How are you, Sergeant? Oh, fine, thanks, Shorty. Kate told me about your trouble, so King and I came right back with her. The whole thing's a lie, that's what. But like the constable says, how can I prove it? I don't have a hankering to get my neck stretched for something I didn't even do. Kate told me the whole story on the way. Where'd the killing take place? On the trail to our cabin, about three miles out. There's a hill out there where the trail goes around, and sort of a gully off to one side. You can't miss it. Well, right out there and have a look around. Meantime, don't worry, Shorty. Let's go, Kate. Come along, King. A short time later, Sergeant Preston and Kate, with King, arrived at the place where the killing took place. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. Easy. Eddie. That's about where it was, according to what Shorty said. Guess it might have been from that gully back there that the killer shot at the prospector. Yes, it's possible. I'll take King over there and have a look around. Maybe we can find something. Come on, King. Look out. Hey, King, where are you going? You're right, Kate. Get down, Kate. Down, King. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Well, sir, fellas and girls... The way visitors have been dropping in on us lately, I wonder what's going to happen today. Sure enough, we do have a visitor. Rather peculiar looking one, too. Uh, judging by that odd cap you're wearing, that huge pipe, to say nothing of that magnifying glass in your hand, I'd say that you, sir, are a detective. Right oh boy. I'd say, too, that your name is, um, uh, Sherlock. Oh, deucedly clever of you, old chap. No relation, of course, to the Sherlock. Oh, I see. Well, tell us, what brings you here? Don't tell a soul. I'm on the trail of something big, colossal. What is it? Well, it's... uh, By Jove, I seem to have quite forgotten. Maybe I can help you remember. Is it something we all know about? Oh, quite. It's famous, you know. It's delightfully edible and has something to do with some sort of uh, weapon. Oh. You say it's good to eat and it has something to do with a weapon? Listen. Hey, Joe, that's it. It's ejected from gun. <laughs> Sherlock, you mean shot from gun. Oh, right, oh, right. Oh. Wheat, all right, shot from gun. Upon my word. Seems there's another matter connected with a, a quadruped of some sort. Oh, you mean... <clears throat> right, oh. I knew I'd track it down. I've been looking for the breakfast that's colossal. Wheat or rice shot from gun and topped with milk and shrewd. Thanks, old chap. Well, must be running along now. Pip, hip, and all that sort of thing. <laughs> well, sir, fellas and girls, don't forget, wheat or rice shot from guns means just one thing. It means Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. It means the ready-to-serve breakfast cereal of tender, toasty, crisp, colossal, king-size grains of premium wheat or rice exploded up to eight times normal size. Bigger and better tasting. That's Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. And to get the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns, remember this. It's never sold in bags or bulk. Be sure to have Mom get the famous big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the one and only Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Now to continue our story. 
As Sergeant Preston, King, and Kate stopped where the prospector had been killed, they were suddenly startled by gunshots from the gully off to one side. Look, Sergeant, two men riding away fast. Too far away to recognize them. Let's get after them. Maybe we can gun them on the run. No, wait. With King here, we can follow their trail and see where they go. There may be others involved in this. Guess they found out I went to Selkirk after you, and when they saw us in town, they followed us out here. Yes. All right, King, we'll go now. It'll be up to you, boy, to find out where they went. Steady, Steady. fellow. Steady. Let's go, King. Get there. Get up. With King barking excitedly along the trail they were following, Preston and Kate made their way back to Dundee. As they reached town, Sergeant Preston called out to King. King! King! Hey, boy! Quiet, King! Now what, Sergeant? Steady. I'll follow from here on foot, Kate. You take my horse with you and meet me at the constable's office. All right. Hand me the rein, will you? Right. Here you are. I'll be waiting, Sergeant. Get up! Get up! All right, fella. I'll go after them, King. A short time later, Sergeant Preston and King joined Kate and the constable in the office. What'd you find out, Sergeant? King followed the trail to the back door of the cafe. Back door of the cafe, huh? Yes. Maybe they went there to report to someone. Try the sneaking killers! Let's get over there and bust that place wide open till we find the two men King trailed into town. No, Kate, that wouldn't do any good. But, Sergeant, we got to... The evidence is all against Shorty for that murder. We might find the ones who shot at us, but we couldn't accuse them of the prospector's killing without proof. Sergeant Preston's right, Kate. We could hold those two for shooting at you and the sergeant, but it wouldn't clear Shorty now. Well, then, what do we do now? I can't let you take Shorty to Selkirk to stand trial for that killing when I know darn well the poor... Wait a minute, Kate. I'm hoping I won't have to take Shorty to Selkirk at all. Say, now, do you mean... What I mean is... I want to discuss a plan I thought of with you and the constable. What kind of a plan, Sergeant? Now, don't forget, I got two men who saw Shorty do the killing. They turn in his gun with two bullets missing. Why, in the face of facts What about the cash the prospector was carrying, Constable? Well, it hasn't turned up yet. Two witnesses say they weren't close enough to see too plain. They think Shorty had it and hid it right quick when they rode up. Well, we searched out there but couldn't find it. Maybe it'll turn up if my plan goes through, Constable. I'll need your help to put the plan over. Well, I just don't... What do you say, Constable? All right, Sergeant. I'll do all I can to help you and King get to the bottom of things. Now, suppose you tell me about that plan of yours. Meantime, in Walt Stoner's office and back at the cafe, Fred and Dave were making their report. We followed the Monty, Walt. Him and the dog went out with Kate Wilkins to the spot where we ambushed that prospect. Yeah, that's right. Did they seem to turn up anything? I hope you two didn't leave any evidence out there when you did the shooting. Oh, we were careful then. But a while ago, when we took some shots at the Mountie and Dog, we had to beat it out of there fast. Well, you shot him. him. We Well, we thought if we could get the... Oh, you fools, that dog of Preston is smart. He'll pick up your tracks and lead Preston right back here to the cafe. Gosh, I didn't think of that. Oh, what if he does, Walt? That Mountie can't pin anything on us. He didn't get a look at us, and... Well, anyway, how could he prove we had anything to do with that killer? You can't tell what that Mountie will do. I've heard plenty about him and that dog of his. Well, a lot of the men that come here use those two horses of yours, Walt. The ones we used. He can't prove who was on him, even. Yeah, that's right. We're going to have to watch him plenty careful. You two better go upstairs and turn in for a bit of sleep. Later, when the crowd gathers, just mix in with the others. And keep your mouth shut, understand? Sure, we will. Don't worry about us, Walt. We don't want any trouble with the Marty. You'll be in trouble right now. If he ever finds out you two are the ones who shot at him and his dog. Now get out of here. Later that morning, it began to snow heavily, and by noon, it had turned into a blizzard. Early that afternoon, two townsmen walked to the cafe where most of the men had gathered. Yeah, sure is a humdinger of a blizzard, isn't it? Yeah. Didn't expect the first storm to hit so hard. Uh, 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 Hi there, Fred. Did they take Shorty to Selkirk, do you know? No, and with this storm, looks like he'll be stuck here in Dundee a while. Well, I just can't believe Shorty'd do a thing like that. Just don't seem possible. Yeah, they got the goods on him, looks like to me. Shorty knew that prospector had cash with him. Yeah, and he was caught red-handed, too. Yeah, we all knew the stranger had money on him. He said it right here in front of us. That is, in front of all but Fred and Dave. They wasn't here at the time. That's right, we weren't. We saw it happen. 
so nobody can say Shorty isn't guilty. That's right. Well, uh, what happened to the money? Shorty must have hit it quick somewhere. Yeah. How come you didn't see him hiding it? We was a little too far away for that. We heard two shots just as we come around the bend. Then we saw the prospector lying on the ground with Shorty right after him. Well, I'll be... Why, he could have tossed the money bag behind some rocks or something when he heard us coming. What I don't like is that they're still yeah. keeping him here in that dinky jail. And with this blizzard, they won't take him away for several days, looks like. Yeah. Right. What we ought to do is make him pay for what he did. Now, wait a minute. I heard Sergeant Preston is in town. He wouldn't let you go What's there to What's one do... Marty against a bunch of men like us? Anyhow, he should have got Shorty out of here and back to Selkirk this morning. There's no place around here for a killer like that. Oh, no, I don't know. We could easily raid the jailhouse. Yeah, I'm all for it. Wait a minute. What's going on here? What's the racket about? We're thinking of going after Shorty Wilkins. Yeah, and it's a good idea, too. Now, hold on, all of you. We've got to have things done in a legal way here in Dundee. That's right, Walt. And that Marty won't take any fooling from this crowd, either. The Marty Sergeant Preston came here to investigate and take Shorty back to Selkirk. With Fred and Dave to go there and testify against him, Shorty won't have a chance anyway. So forget this raiding party of yours. Hey, there's a constable. What's all the excitement, Stoner? Well, I just convinced the crowd they'd better let the law take care of Shorty Wilkins. I just see you stick up for the law like that. I'm constable here. You got Sergeant Preston in town, too. You all would have run into plenty of trouble. We know Shorty won't have a chance with all the evidence against him, constable. It's the way he looks, all right. We've been keeping Shorty here, hoping to get him to confess what he did with the two pouches of money that was stolen from the prospector. Two pouches, you say? Yeah, that's right. Seems like the stranger's partner gave him two pouches of money when he paid off for the claim. Now, wait a minute. There must Shut be... up, Fred. What could you know about it? Yeah. What were you about to say, Fred? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing at all. Like Walt says, how could I know anything about it anyway? I guess that's right. Uh, set everybody up on the house, Parkeep. Right. Go ahead, boys. Help yourself. Fred, I want to see you and Dave back in the office right away. Come on. Now, you dirty double crosses, where's that other pouch of money? Honest, Walt, there was only one. We both searched the prospect. That's right, Walt. There was only one pouch of money, the one we gave you. Now, don't lie to me. The constable just said there were two. I got that one here. Now, where's the other one? There wasn't any other stunner. Hey, the constable. He sneaked in behind us. I'll gun him down. Hey, somebody shot through the window. Gun that constable and let's get out of here. Get him, King! Momentarily startled when the back door slammed open, Walt Stoner hesitated. And as he again raised his gun, a great fern streak, responding to Preston's command, sped like lightning across the room and sprang. It was the mighty dog, King. Take him off. Pay my wrist. Help your gun, Dave. Hold your I'll get you for this. Oh, you don't. Help. Help this dog. He's killing me. Dung King. Dung boy. I sneaked the door open when they came in here. And I heard them saying they shot the prospector. A pouch of money on the desk proves it. Your idea of having me see there were two pouches? That's what did it. You can't prove that isn't my money. The prospector's partner will identify it when he gets here. Meantime, we'll hold you, Stoner, with the other two for murder. No, I didn't have anything to do with it. Fred and Dave asked me to keep that pouch for them. I was just about to give it back. Why, you lying crook? You planned the whole thing. You sent us to ambush that prospector. That's right. Then Shorty come along and we hid... When he was bending over the body, we rode up and grabbed him. What about the two bullets shot from Shorty's gun? Walt went out back and shot Shorty's gun off before we turned him over. All right, we've heard enough. I'll take them to your office, Constable. Kate and Shorty are waiting. Come on. All right. Move on, you two. Move on. The three crooks were taken from Walt Stoner's office by Sergeant Preston and the Constable. And a few minutes later, the group entered the Constable's office. All right, get inside. Well, what happened, Sergeant? Did you find out anything? Yes, we did, Kate. These three men tried to frame Shorty for that killing. We got them to admit it. Why, those yellow galoots? Let me at them, Sergeant. I'll show them they can't do that to my husband and get away with it. Now, Kate, calm yourself. <sighs> the law will take care of them. Well, I could save the law a lot of trouble and enjoy doing it. <laughs> Well, Constable, don't stand there with your mouth open. Go get Shorty out of that barred-up room you got him in. Well, I clean forgot about Shorty for a minute. I'll have him out here in a jiffy. Come on out here, Shorty. What? Why, great day, you mean I'm going to go free now? Did them three do the killing? We should have put a bullet into that shrimp when we saw him bend over that dead prospector. If you two fools hadn't gone out there and shot at the money, they wouldn't have found out. It might have taken longer, Stoner, but I'm sure sooner or later, King and I would have caught up with you. 
Yep. And King agrees with you on that, Sergeant. Ah, but I gotta admit, I was plenty worried for a time. <laughs> of course, Shorty ain't much to look at, but he is my husband. I... <laughs> Yeah, that's right. For a minute, I almost forgot that. Mm. Yes, me. I don't think that a half pint would have the nerve to shoot anybody. We're not asking you, Stoner, so shut up. As a matter of fact, though, I was sure, too, that you could never shoot anyone, Shorty. Oh, it isn't a question of having nerve. Stoner, I thought you were mighty smart with all your schemes. You and your friends have learned that you can't put anything over on the Royal Northwest Mounted Police, especially on Sergeant Preston and King. Matter of fact, Kate... King saved the day for me when he jumped that killer stoner. <laughs> He's sure a wonderful dog. You can take my he word for that. He sure is. We'd have had a chance if it hadn't been for that dog. Well, it looks like I got a lot of folks to thank for getting me out of this mess, along with your dog, King, Sergeant. <laughs> well, for one, you can thank your wife, Kate. Why, she liked to bust this place wide open when she found out you were locked up. And then she went to Selkirk for Sergeant Preston and King. Why, if she hadn't thought of getting them quick, shorty... Might have gone bad for you. Better uh, lock these men up now, Johnson. Right. Guess it better. Come on, all yeah. Move along here. Well, sure a relief to see them locked up and to know Shorty's free once more. Uh, well, that's something a fella could question. What? About me being free, I, I mean. <laughs> well, of course, Kate gives better cooking at home than that got here. Well, that's that, Sergeant. Yep. Thanks to the Sergeant and King... Shorty, I'm going to give you the best meal you ever ate when you get home, Case. Oh, just to show you, I'm glad to have you back. King and I know how worried you were, Case, but we won't tell Shorty too much about it. And I guess we're all glad to say this case is closed. Hey, King? <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's program. Ask Mother. She knows. Yes, Mother knows that quality comes first in a food. That's why Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are made from only the premium grains of wheat or rice. What's more, Mother likes the fact that wheat or rice shot from guns makes an easy-to-fix, thrifty, deluxe family breakfast with milk and fruit. For added health benefits, natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron are restored in Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Buy both delicious kinds tomorrow. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time... By Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of the Wilderness Uprising. The Yukon nights are lonely at best. A great silence broods over the country. But there was one night in Wilderness Valley when we knew that the silence was filled with danger that the few of us in the trading post were surrounded by hundreds of hostile Indians. King was winging his way over the frozen trail to bring us help, but we knew the attack would come before dawn. Be sure to hear this exciting story Monday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. So long. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>